How's it going guys? Hope you're doing awesome. So in this video, we're gonna code the k-means clustering algorithm from scratch. And uh, yeah, if you want the theory aspect of, of this algorithm, I'm gonna link a good resource for you in the description below. Uh, and you could come back to this video for the implementation part. Uh, but with that said, let's, let's start uh, coding it. So we're gonna first start with doing a, a class. Uh, let's do k-means clustering. And uh, yeah, so I guess Let's do the skeleton code first. Um, we're gonna have init, and we're gonna have another function which is gonna initialize uh, random centroids. So, yeah, as I said, I'm assuming you know the k-means. So we're going to first of all just randomly assign the the uh, the centroids, and and we're gonna have k of them, and then after uh, having our centroids, we're gonna create clusters. Meaning we're gonna go through each point and check which is the which is the closest centroid uh, and and assign that point to to that I guess color of the closest centroid and that that way we're gonna create the clusters. So this is gonna take x and also the centroids that we have. Then after the the clusters, we're gonna calculate uh, new centroids. Um, so. And we do this by, you know, taking the average of, of that cluster, and that's the new centroid point. Um, and sort of that, that's the algorithm, right? And th then we're going to uh, predict a cluster. Let's see, I don't remember what predict cluster is perhaps a bad name. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to go through each point, and we're going to assign it uh, sort of we're gonna obtain the class label from this so yeah, predict cluster is going to return the uh, the the label of the group that the point belongs to or according to the algorithm so then we're gonna have another one we're gonna plot figure and uh, it's gonna be nice for the visualization and yeah then we're gonna have define uh, the fit function, which is just going to use, I guess, all of these functions that we've implemented uh, above and uh, iter iteratively improve uh, on the centroids and the, and the clusters. And then we're just going to call the algorithm from if name equals main. Okay, so that's the, the skeleton code. So you get a overview. Let's now start with the init function. So we're going to send in x and also the number of clusters. So number of clusters is going to be how many clusters do we do we want to have, and uh, and k here is going to be the number of clusters. Then um, so I guess k means would run until there's no change, but we could also set a max iterations um, so that it doesn't run for an infinite amount of time. I guess that that would never. I haven't uh, came across examples where that happens, but I guess it's a good thing just to have. So we're gonna have max iterations to 100, um, and uh, then we can do self.num examples uh, and self.num features is gonna be x dot shape. So we're gonna have the training examples on the rows and the features on the columns. Yeah, sorry, actually, we need to do the, the imports as well. I forgot about that. So uh, we're going to import numpy as mp. We're going to uh, import matplotlib dot matplotlib, yeah, dot pyplot as plt. And then from sklearn dot datasets import make blobs. So uh, we're going to use this for the plot, numpy for the, the linear algebra, and then sklearn make blobs for the data set. And... Uh, we're gonna have another one here as well, uh, self dot plot figure, and we're gonna have true just to get a nice visualization. And uh, yeah, so that's in it. Let's now do the random centroids. So we're gonna set the centroids to be mp zeros of self dot k comma self dot num features, and uh, essentially we're gonna have k of them, right? And for each centroid, we need to have. The, the the values of the dimensions that it that it's uh, centered at. So I guess in this case, uh, we're since we're gonna plot it, it's gonna be in two D. So the number of features is gonna be two. Um, and let's say the the k is three. So this is gonna be something like uh, a three three by two matrix. 
then we're just gonna for k in range self dot k uh, we, we're just gonna choose a random centroid so we're gonna use x and we're gonna do mp random dot choice range self dot num examples so what this means is uh, if we look so it's gonna be range num example so it, let's say we have 50 or something it's gonna be 0 up to 49 and then it's going to take just a random choice. Let's say it becomes one something. And then we're going to do x of one. So we're going to choose the first, um, or I guess the second, since Python is zero indexed. So the first, um, the, sorry, the second point of our data set, and uh, that would take all of the the features as well. So so this would just be a random point essentially. And then we're going to do centroids of k is equal to centroid. So now that we have all of the centroids, we're just going to return centroids. So then we're ready to create our clusters. And what we're going to do is we're going to do clusters equals a large array uh, of, of arrays for underscore in range of self.k. And uh, what we're going to do is that um, each array inside this large array is going to be associated to a specific cluster. Um, so for example, let's do we have an array and inside this we have two arrays and this first array is going to be associated to the first cluster and this is going to be associated to the second cluster so here we're assuming k is 2 and what we're going to do is let's say that a point uh, is closest to the first centroid point which is this array uh, then we're going to add that uh, that example that training point so let's say we have 50 points and let's say that we're looking at the third uh, training example so we, we might append three to this one and uh, and then uh, and then let's say that we're looking at training example or point number 50 in our data set uh, and let's say that it's 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 closest to the second cluster uh, then we're going to add it to this array instead and so it would be appended to this one um, just a small example it's going to make more sense i think when we go through it now uh, with the loop so we're going to do for point index comma point in enumerate x okay so we're going through each point in our data set and then we're going to do which is the closest centroid to uh to this point okay uh, rather we're looking at a point and we, we want to know which is the closest centroid to the point we're looking at and we're going to use the Euclidean distance. So we're going to do mp square root of mp sum of, let's see, point minus centroids squared. And uh, one thing here is that we're utilizing NumPy broadcasting. This is a single point and these are multiple points. So, uh, yeah, I guess you're familiar with NumPy broadcasting. If you're not, I guess just Google it. But it's going to subtract. So this is going to be, let's say it's... Uh, I don't know, three by two, and this is going to be one by two. Then the outcome of this is going to be a three by two, where this point or centroid has been subtracted for every uh, uh, across every row from this this point. And uh, and uh, then we're just going to do element wise squared. So I guess in the end, this is just this is going to be a a three by two um, a a three by two matrix. And and then we would take the, the sum across the features. So we have to be specific about that. Axis is one. And then we take the square root. Um, but then we also want to know, so which is the minimum of those, right? Now we have the distance, distances to all of the centroids. But we want the closest one to be the closest centroid. Makes sense, right? So we want to do mp argmin of that, which would give us the index of the closest centroid. And then what we can do is we can do clusters of that closest centroid. Right now we're looking at this specific one of these uh, subarrays in this larger array, and we're gonna append our point index. And then uh, what we would do we would return clusters. All right, and then um, so after we have this cluster. Now we're ready for the next iteration of k-means, which is we're going to take the average of our of our cluster, and that's going to be our new centroid, and then we can repeat the process all over again. Am I recording, by the way? Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> so, 
uh, calculate new centroids, we can do centroids is going to be np zeros of self dot k uh, comma self dot number features. So let's see, this is going to be, I guess, the same as what we did here, right? When we initialize the random centroids, and then we're just going to go through uh, each cluster. So for index comma cluster in enumerate clusters, we're going to compute the new centroid. Uh, new centroid is going to be NP mean of X of cluster comma axis equals zero. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're the cluster here. Remember, is just an array of all of the the indexes of the points that are associated with that cluster. So we can directly just index with X um, to get all of the points that are associated with that cluster. And then we can just take the mean um, very easily and we get the new centroid location. And then we can just do centroids of index. It's just gonna be the new centroid. So we're updating the, cent the centroid location. And then we're just gonna do return centroids. And let's see, so what we wanna do now with the predict cluster, uh, let's say we've run k means and in the end we wanna know uh, well, what are the class labels that we predict these points to be in? Uh, then we're just going to do y predict is going to be mp zeros of self dot number of examples. So for each point, we're gonna uh, we're gonna guess the, the label for it. So we're gonna do for cluster index comma cluster in enumerate clusters. We're gonna go through uh, each cluster. And then we're going to do for sample index in cluster. I'm going to do y prediction of sample index is equal to cluster index. So right, we're, we're first checking. Okay, which are the points? Um, go through all of the 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 training exam uh, the points that are associated with the first cluster. And then we're just going through each point in that cluster. Uh, so each training example and doing y prediction of that specific index to be associated with with the cluster index uh, which for the first cluster is going to be zero second cluster is going to be one etc and uh, yeah that's all we have to do and then we can just return y prediction and to get sort of a nice figure we can do plot dot scatter x all training examples all points of the first dimension and then x all of the second dimension so X and Y, and then uh, we're going to use the, the, the color is going to be from from Y in that Y here is going to be the, the class labels so that the uh, matplotlib, matplotlib knows which, which colors each point should be. And then we're just going to do some extra arguments for the, the color and the size. So yeah, this is not that important. And then plot.show. All right, so now we've done all of the necessary functions that we need to actually train uh, k-means. So the fifth function is going to train it. So uh, we're going to do centroids is going to be self.initialize random centroids. And we're going to send in our data set x. And then we can do for iteration in range of self.max iterations. Um, we're going to do clusters is going to be self.create clusters. And we're going to send in X and as well as our centroids. And then we can do, uh, we can do just do previous centroids. We can just uh, do so that it, it copies the centroids. And then we can calculate our new centroids to be self.calculate new centroids. And it's going to, we're going to send in the clusters and we're going to send in the X. And then we could do difference to be centroids minus previous centroids. And uh, this is useful because if there's no difference, then it's uh, converged. So we can do if not diff dot any, um, and any will check if there's anyone that's that's uh, sort of if there if, if it's any that's not zero. So if if there's not any that's different um, from the previous, then we're gonna print uh, termination criterion satisfied k means has converged something like that and then we're just going to break from the for loop and then we could do 
uh, y prediction to be self dot predict cluster and we're going to send in clusters and x and sort of these clusters here is going to be after the the algorithm has converged or reached the maximum number of iterations and then we could do if self dot plot figure we could do self dot plot fig of x and y prediction and we could also return y prediction and yes yeah, so there's something wrong here self yeah sorry so this should be indented like this yeah yeah so that should be the the k-means clustering let's let's see that it actually works um and i'm gonna do first mp random dot c to be 10 um just for the uh, so you, the reproducibility and then number of cluster let's say three and we can do x and let's not take normally you would do x and y but this is unsupervised we're not gonna have the y ones we're gonna do make blobs of number of sample let's say we have a thousand number of features uh it's gonna be two so we can visualize it and then centers is gonna be number of clusters uh clusters and then we can do k means to be k means clustering just initialize the class and we can do y prediction to be k means dot fit of x and that should also plot the figure for us so let's see now if that works all uh, right so we need to do uh, plots and yeah so we can i guess we can make this larger so we can sort of see that um, all we sent into the algorithm was the points, right? We didn't send any any class values, but this is what the algorithm uh, classifies. So it classifies this, the, the red ones to be one group, the purple ones to be uh, one group, and then the yellow ones to be another group. And, and this is very, I mean, this seems to be very correct. This looks, uh, this looks right. Um, I guess if you would change the random seed here, you would get new examples. And uh, yeah, we can do that. We would get something like this. And uh, you can see here that, the, I mean, it makes sense what it's doing, but it could also be the other way around, right? Uh, this could also be separated into two clusters, I guess. Um, not really sure. But yeah, so, but so that's the implementation of uh, K-means clustering. Hopefully you were able to follow all the steps. And if you didn't, then please leave a question in the comment section below. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching the video and uh, see you in the next one.